Scars losing out to Chiefs, you know, a pretty inexperienced Chiefs roster at this particular level. Well, they've certainly got a little bit more soul searching to do when it comes back to now Chalet once again, but now Das against arguably an even more difficult opponent. Whereas for G2, hate to say it, but they should have theoretically an easier time. You're not playing a liquid caliber opponent again here. Now you're going kind of down a level towards Scars. If you can just focus on yourself internally, fix the things that maybe went wrong against Liquid, you should be able to come out on top of, of this one pretty comfortably. I was also thinking about, do we see a Monty bang, uh, Ben? Because when we kind of looked at the matchups for these two and we, and we go back to the the previous Chalet games. Firstly, no shields were banned actually against Scars and Chiefs in that matchup, but it was the Blitz ban from G2 against Liquid. But why they've changed up to the Monty is because for Scars, Tayu is a Montang player. They don't really play the Blitz. And when you look at Tayu as well, 21 plants throughout stage two. With the Monty as his most played operator, it's a pretty easy target ban if you G2, and they're pretty easy one to just kind of say, all right, we banned Blitz last time. This time, though, we have to get rid of the Montang because of this particular player. Yeah, so a bit of a dramatic shape up, or shake up rather, in terms of operator bans heading into this match compared to the two maps played earlier by the respective rosters earlier today. It is just the Valkyrie that carries across the other three selections, the Brava, the Monty, and the two Burrow. All unique for this matchup between the two uh, compared to the earlier matches. So we'll see how that dynamic does play out. The Brava band certainly stands out to me as being a little bit intriguing from Scars, and maybe that actually is a sign of uh, counter trading for GT previously. Maybe some of the regional performances, it's an operator that they may prefer, or one that Scars simply do not want to have to necessarily deal with in this matchup. It does mean, though, that the Blitz has made it through, so something to note. Yeah. It's essentially the same bands of your G2. You've, you've got rid of the Valkyrie once again, and instead of the Blitz, it's the Montang, so kind of like for like. But the Brava and Tubra are vastly different compared to Scars last time, where they banned the Lion and the Fenrir. As we head into this one again, no, it's still best of ones at this point, but both of these two teams, zero and one. You lose this, and you've got to make a pretty deep run. You'll be zero and two in a bit of a hole here at the Major, so you definitely want to get on the board with the win. G2, all of the expectation. And with that, the then you got expectation, there comes the pressure that, that, that comes alongside with it. So I'd be curious to see what this first half is going to bring on the attack to begin for Chalet. I'm expecting them to do well in this half, 4-2 minimum. And if they can't find that, then they could find themselves in a bit of a pickle. For Scars, I, I guess pressure off a little bit in a matchup like this, but really no at the same time, because you're going to then be 0-2 at the Major. So the pressure is still on for Scars. Yeah, the pressure is certainly there, but equally the expectation Still for G2 to probably be a little bit classier in this matchup. But I certainly wouldn't rule out Scars from being ultra competitive. Uh, they have to be. They have to be competitive. Rexit had a really good performance earlier today. G2 so far, slow and steady. Good drone work. Finds out where the Fenrir is. They so will move along. Red Ping immediately does come out as well. Quan Hive Launcher used early by Udo, and it does uh, catch both Fish Like and Rex. And lots of pressure, though, from G2 down below. Where is the reinforcements from Scars, though? There's just no pressure. All holding up above, all holding sight. No kind of push over towards Trophy or even towards West Main. It's pretty free right now for G2 as they get the opening kill. Yeah, the defense is very susceptible to this composition. You have both the Barker and the Dame must avert down below and the Nomad to cover. Oh. Any chance, Tayu? But no, not an overextend there from G2 at all. And the death mark now employed by Ted Deimos, as you mentioned. Doki will try and track down Tayu over towards Piano now. So shifting around a little bit on the, the top side here from Scars. Washoi does find the kill onto Blaz. That's at least something back for Scars. And at the very least, I mean, for G2, they haven't necessarily got this kind of top floor control. But deep from Doki in towards Bathroom. No. Things better off it. Still got the keeper barrier up. Nitro self thrown. This could be good from Nina. Indeed it is. An explosive start from Scars now as they bring it back to four versus three. And Nina's going for more and we'll find more as well. Lovely vault over and Alamau had no idea. Wow. What is going on in this round? I mean, everything in the start was saying G2 beautifully played with the composition that they had in terms of the vert control down below, putting the pressure on, got the opening kill. It's like check mark, check mark, and then just suddenly a bunch of X's as they fail to put the pressure on on the top floor. Wow. That's a way to get some confidence early if your scars won nothing to start. Yeah, falling apart there a little bit at the seams for G2. They got really good early value from the vert-centric composition that 
they brought. It was very successful, but I think Scars were then able to reposition. And the lack of util clearance from G2 proving quite costly. The Izami barriers were very powerful, facilitated that Nitro play. And with that, shifting the momentum and the pressure back onto G2 in that round, who then weren't really set up in response to that. And it allowed that aggression through Solar, then the Vert back down in through Trophy to prove to be a, a pretty costly blow uh, to that attacking effort. So good work from Scars. It was pretty scary for them at the beginning of the round, but they're able to wrangle it back. Yeah, I think that was scary because of the, the system being employed by G2, and, and you kind of think about APAC and what typically goes wrong for these regions at these kind of level of tournaments is that dealing with the structure and the methodical nature of these top, top teams, especially over from the EU and Brazil, that's usually kind of the, where the APAC teams fall apart, and G2 started that beautifully. There was no pressure at all. Down below, Ultimately, when it came time to hit up above, well, Scars were actually pretty decent, especially from Nino, and he's played through Bathroom to get one with the Nitro, follow it up, the Vault over. And as I kind of said at the end of that round, it just builds confidence. If you're a team like Scars, you're going to really be able to play off that confidence. And on the flip side, if you're G2 and you lose a couple of opening rounds, especially attacking into Chalet against a team like Scars, does that mental become tested? It's only one round. Certainly still some good signs from G2. But maybe not quite the one-sided affair we thought this could and maybe should be. Oh, the peak from Nina. I mean, Uno had just no idea. The trade back's pretty swift from Lawyer Up. But you've lost your Ace. You've lost your Hard Breach. Not necessarily super impactful on Bar, but you can sit up. Nina with a plus 20 entry stat line for the year. And the other player in the lobby to top that is Alamau on plus 30. I mean, it's not every day of the week you'd be sitting here and saying that an Azami opening death is a worthwhile trade, but onto the Soul Hard Breach of Uno. Noting that there's no secondaries in the hands of anybody else on the team. Mm. That actually probably is a worthwhile trade. And we'll see how Scars now look to play around that, assuming Nina did spot that it was the ace. Speaking of Alamal, does respond here in oh, round number dead. two. Oh, I thought he would be dead. Shooting out towards the piano window. Thought maybe Blast coming in from the actual bathroom side would catch him off guard. And we're down to a two versus two. Very winnable round for, Scar for Scars on defense, Chalet. These are the kind of rounds that you've got to be able to try and find success. G2 a little bit susceptible to begin here on Chalet. Plenty of time, though, to re-coordinate how they want to try and hit site. Get a couple of these final drones out, of which Laura's only got the one and the only one remaining, although you do still have these Reteros. Deathmark, by the way, did fail because of the Mute Jammer. I think there might be a real lack of info here for the attack. Nobody is spectating drones, only two left. Oh, Tayu! Through the hatch, finds the kill, and go back and play Barstock. Laura's going to really struggle to do much from the drop position, indeed. Wushoi will confine the round for Scars and a 2 0 start defense. Chalet, hello, we've got a game. We've got a game. Yeah, it's been really good to watch. Scars' adaptability through the mid round has been really quite strong so far, aided off the back of a big spawn peak to really uh, disrupt any hard breach potential there from the attack. And G2 left to scramble again, much like the previous round. Not aided by the fact that that time around as well, drone economy was quite weak. Um, I was keeping an eye on the three dead players and nobody was spectating drones. So operating under the assumption that those drones weren't in valuable positions and then sort of trying to fight through the fog of war in the late round, always very, very difficult in Siege with the yeah. pressure of the clock mount. Of course, with best of ones, it's well more of a sprint rather than a marathon. You get these rounds ticking over pretty quickly. I, I would not be surprised if G2 call attack if they lose this round. You're just suddenly 3-0 down. You haven't got an attacking round. I, I would probably be the best timely manner to call it. And it really does go to then show the start that Scars have made so far here on Chalet. I mean, how much of this is down to Scars versus maybe a little bit of sloppiness creeping into G2's game? Bit of both is typically the easy out, but... I think Scars have just been able to find some really good footing. Capitalize on maybe some of the mistakes from G2. Just hitting some really good shots. Who's going to stand up for G2 though into the third round? Attacking on Chalet needs to be prevalent. And so far, you're 0 and 2 to begin. Alamout does find the opening kill on Tanina. 
And that's something after Nina found the opening kill in the previous round. I will note in that uh, G2 Liquid matchup, they attacked in the second half, but they did lose rounds seven and eight and then recovered with four straight. So there you go. don't put a line through G2's name just yet. They've already proven so far today here on Chalet that they can respond. And certainly a response found early on in this third round, but it's the latter stages of these, well, very brief opening rounds where G2 have just crumbled a little bit. The starts haven't been really bad. The starts have been the strength of G2, in fact. Thought maybe we're sure he would go for a peek over towards Ego, but it's better off it. Doki. Certainly some control here from G2 in the third round. It feels like they've finally woken up. A two-player advantage with plenty of time to further compound on it, in which Lawyer will do just that against Raxon. And this is looking like the G2 that we expected in this matchup. Totally dominant across the board in this third round. It will not be flawless, but it's basically just about that. G2 on the board, 2-1. I'm going to feel really smart if they go on to win four straight here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what they did, they did against Liquid. Oddly enough, what kick-started their momentum in that Liquid matchup was an attack into that exact same objective as well. So, we'll wait and see. Of course, it, I need to put in the... Asterix, that past performance is not indicative of future performance. It's a different opponent. It's a whole different ball game. But my point being that even after a bit of a slow start, being on attack here on Shala, they've got the capability. They've got a proven track record to be able to respond. And if, and in this kind of matchup on paper, G2 are always going to be the roster that we back in to be a little bit more adaptable on the fly naturally, anyway. So yeah, I mean, I would have been far more concerned if it was, if it was scars like zero two down in that same situation. I would have been they're, thinking they're, they're, you know, they're, not, they're not coming back. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> the alarm bells would be ringing. But for G2, they've got the respect there that it's like, okay, this one's not over. It's more to do with the start of scars rather than the start of G2. Of which now they're on the board two one. Decent pacing in this game so far. Top floor. Ask the bedroom at an office once again here in the fourth round. Of course, Nina will be a little bit disappointed to have lost his life so early into that round, but credit to Alamal, 4 and 2 now, really leading the way for G2. That really was the first proper beatdown round that we've had so far. And maybe just the confidence booster that G2 need to just get themselves going in this matchup. So a couple of different changes here in composition from G2 compared to what we saw previously on this particular objective. They must not in play Doki this time around in Twitch. That's likely in response to the mirror. Grim Bees as well available to help flush out that Solar Stairs position and the Ying as well available into a lineup from the defense which has no Warden in play. Should also add as well when you kind of look at the statistics for these teams, Scars over in Japan League have a 77% defensive win rate. The next best is 70%, which is CAG. So, I mean, they're the kind of team that can do well defensively. Do they then have that same level of attacking prowess in the second half? I know it is Chalet. G2, though, do prefer their attacks over the defense, statistically. 90 seconds remaining in this fourth round. Now putting pressure down below through Kitchen. We're at just outside of that bathroom position on the balcony. I'm sure he's going to go for the peak. And if he does, I think he does potentially lose his life. Prone goes. Moira. Has at least spotted one. And with that, a little bit of information in terms of the positioning of Scars defensively. 1-4-1. One, one, Wreck down. Same with Alamel. But no more buck in terms of the pressure that can be applied from down below. 4-G-2. On the rappel outside bedroom. Doki's made his way in though and I don't think Nina realized that. Where's the pressure on the solar side defense from Scars? Far too easy of the push in for G2. One for one in terms of that most recent fight. Still a lot of time left in this round. Tayo needs to get involved. One still outside of the balcony. It's on the left side though. I mean, come on. That was a little bit too easy. Laurie will take a free kill and with that, G2 should take the round. Yeah, pretty clutch round in the end for G2. It may not feel like that position now in the one versus three, but they didn't have a lot of utility for that final part of the push. Where's for sure even been? Yeah, trying to deny from down below. Okay, G2 have arrived. 
Yeah, but back to that point, they, they didn't have a, a lot of utility left at the final portion of that push. They had one Candela, and Doki was the one who was like... Doki I think just blind sends it into sight. Identified that, guys, if if nobody makes a move here, we, we're we going to get stalled out. We're screwed. He sent it forward, got a kill, eventually traded, but gained space for his team, and then able to get that plan done. Great response, though, from G2 after the opening two rounds for Scars. They've been able to fight back, do so quite well, and pretty dominantly as as well. I think the, the two rounds that we've seen from G2 almost look far more dominant than the rounds we saw from Scars, and it really does put them in a good position. To close this half out, trying to find that 4-2 advantage for Scars, they honestly need this third round. Absolutely a requirement. If they're going to have any chance in this match, three rounds minimum. Otherwise, if G2 make it 4-2, that's four rounds in a row. That's good confidence going up to defense in the second half. I think they'll be able to close it out pretty comprehensively. So a chance now for Scars to, well, bounce back and see what they can do. Scars through the first punch, but G2 have countered. And I feel like a, a, a lot of the rounds for, for Scars in the first two, especially where they found their success, was any early engagements. Like, you don't really want to allow G2 to get these, these these setup games going right deep to the, say, final minute remaining. Because then otherwise, G2 are going to be in said best position to then capitalize on the round. You need to try and get them off their feet a little bit. Force them out of these setup positions. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to go for jump outs at the very beginning of the round. But need to see more pressure for Scars around that minute 40, minute 50. Just disrupt the setup of G2 as much as you possibly can. Bar games for this one in the fifth round. And it could be a quick entry here for Doki. Off of the Lion Scan. And it is going to be a mirror window facing in towards Library to try and deny that entry position. So Mezzanine hold for Scars. Yeah, pretty classical power position to be played here on Chalet. G2. No shortage of tools to try and dislodge that though. Do they elect to commit, however? Seems oh, to be a moment of hesitation, die? but Rek gets an absolute freebie. Nitro from down below and Laura elsewhere to double down for G2. I just cannot comprehend the idea of what Rek is trying to do. Maybe when you're zero and, and three at that point, you're just trying to get into the game, but it just is such a low margin push. And there's a player in sight though. Blaz has just gone blissfully on a wander and it gives one back for Scars, 3v3. Lura in towards the hallway, down life from stairs, up close, and somewhat of a trade. But the advantage for Scars all of a sudden, Alamal by himself in a 1v2. I don't know if we're sure he's in a position where he's going to get brought back up, no. But that is good information as to the entry point of Alamal. So then, 70 seconds on the clock. you got to win this with your Scars. You cannot be losing these kind of rounds. The third round is at their beckoning. Alamau may be anticipating the fact that someone could be watching this diffuser. You can see the hesitancy in trying to pick it up. Has the yellow pink information on Tayu. But he's got so much time to then maybe head back up above. Double stack in towards bar for Scars. And we've got a huge yellow ping that Alamau wants to play off. But he knows he can't just push in blindly. He's playing this really patiently, really well. Trying to force out the second player. Which is fish-like. Yeah, we'll look to reposition. Doesn't walk into that cross. Banshee to greet him. Alamau's trying his best to solve this puzzle, but it's probably not going to happen. Especially with the mirror window facing this now position. Now the yellow pings are on him as well, as much as it is on Tayu. He knows he's right behind that bar. Tayu's able to reposition, though, because of the information over towards the hallway. And Fish-like in the air. There is that second player. Does find the kill. Scars will find a third. And this one's actually turning out to be quite competitive. Yeah, that was probably the scrappiest round I think we've had so far in terms of the quality of the mid-round. It was a little bit all over the place. We saw the wreck freebie over towards library. Oh, and then uh, Blaz just walked in. Blaz was like nonchalant in sight. <laughs> like, yeah, I might be able to contest this mirror because they lack the utility to clear that backstall mirror. And I think G2, unfortunately, kind of had to try and send it and, and unlock it. And it was unsuccessful. And then to the credit of Scars, we did see really good discipline from them in the late round. Gave Alam out not even an inch in the one versus two, able to close that out in a comprehensive fashion. and So a 3-2 scoreline sets us up for the continuation of a competitive match here. If Scars can maybe just find the lead heading into the second, it could be a big win for them, as we highlighted before. As I highlighted in the, uh, the pre-match, I believe it was, 
in terms of the shallow that both of these teams played earlier today due to on an attack were actually you know, quite strong. Mm -hmm. um, so we might see Scars subvert that expectation, which makes things uh, quite intriguing. It was four rounds against Liquid that G2 got on attack. To, really? And they lost that game. So... And they're not going to find that here. Which is at least impressive for Scars. This would be a, a pretty good win for them if they can tank down G2 at this point in the tournament. They don't want to go 0-2 down and, and G2 could find themselves in that bracket if they do lose this. There is a lot riding on this match. It's a long way back. It's a lot of best of threes that you got to, to then play. G2 is the only team I had listed from Phase 1 to make it to Phase 3 in my predictions. And I'm sure there's plenty of other people who would say the same. Scars were not in that discussion as reference. I don't think we had any APAC teams you and I in Phase 3. No. None. So final round of the half. If Scars can find a fall, that sets them up very nicely going into the second half and puts all the pressure onto G2. I think if G2 though can tie this up 3-3, they could find a way then in the second half to get over the line. Pressure above. Alamount a good position already taking out Mez. His basement. Scars have still got a decent little hold in towards games and fish like over towards dining and Nina finds the opening kill onto Alamal. Another opening kill for Scars and they've got themselves in a really tremendous position. They've still got map control guys on, on basement and G2 aren't hitting direct. They're trying to clear this. There's 90 oh. seconds left and you're down a Uno player. Doesn't know. He doesn't know. Rexen will just stand up, gets the free kill onto Uno. G2 capitulating in the first half against Scars. It's about to be 4-2 unless they can really bring it back. I mean, we've seen Rack play some intriguing positions in this first half. And that's his first rewarded. kill. Yeah. And they're hunting him down. One over towards Library Stairs. One pushing him from behind in Barstock already. Doki will get rid of him with the Vendetta. One minute remaining. They needed that one. Good clear. Four versus three. Blast down West Main. Scars have actually got Washoi over towards Boiler, and he's in a good... They're actually double stacking this with Fish Like. G2 might not be aware of this. Yeah, I don't think they have the drone economy at this point. And there's not Unless a lot of time, even, even if you did. There's three drones remaining, 40 seconds left. Time to start hitting site, but what have you really got? No logic bombs, either. There's not a lot of utility. One flash, and they're just going to have to try and send it in. Washoi not time at all for the gas, babe. Keep the gun up in that position. 25 seconds left, and now an entry point for G2. Keep a barrier, though, to stall out this push. 20 seconds on the clock. Can Doki continue this run of form here in the final round of the half? G2 looking to draw it out. The drop comes through from Loira. Deep over towards his pillar position, and Nina does find one in the meantime. There's 10 no seconds. Kit. They don't have kit either. It's not a quiet. It's a one versus one with five seconds left. Five, three kills for Nina, but there's no time. Doki does not have the kit. It's 4 2 to Scars. And you can hear what it means for them as well in the background. What a half. I mean, G2 almost bringing it back. But four defensive rounds for Scars puts them in an, a, an amazing position going into the second half now for Chalet Attack. G2 staring down the barrel of an 0-2 start at the Major for Phase 2. They're going to have to dig... Dig deep into the bag of tricks and try and find something here. Hmm. Again, another another strange round to close out the uh, the half there. Gigi having some major struggles off site. Doki then trying to do it all in the final portion of the round. And Scars to their credit, just doing enough there. Would this be upset of the day for you? With this, just take that mantle. Of the day? What I mean what what, what, what are the contenders? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking as well. I mean maybe <laughs> Falcons over Dark Zero is still 7-4 to kick off the day. W7M over BDS, but I don't think that I, I think this would beat that. I think it would have to take that mantle. I mean Falcons have, have actually shown. I mean you've already taken down Dark Zero and Team Secret. They're 2 0. What a day from them. Maybe Falcons are favourites to win the event now. <laughs>
A long way to go in this one, though. And this is this is the issue with APAC teams, guys. We've seen it time and time again. They get <laughs> into a good... It. I'm sorry, but they get into a good position and then it all just falls apart. They love to tease you. The masters. <laughs> What can G2 do now on defense? So if anything, I think they, they can actually get a bit more control of this game. Alamount move, come on. Yep, does do so. We're sure losing his life. Good contest here from Alamount in towards Bedroom. Up close. That's not going to work at all from Rex and G2. Strong defensively to start here on Bedroom and Office. The attack from Scars, they're trying to go fast, but they get denied immediately. And that's just not going to work against G2. Got to have the patience, guys. Can't just be trying to just send it straight in towards sight. Not on this one. Yeah, I don't really understand what the trigger point for that attack was for Scars in this round, but whatever it was, it was pretty miscalculated. They hadn't done a massive amount of job to disrupt keep out positions, nor did they have a great read. As you can see, there's only one drone up now. Midway point of the round. So this guy's falling short here on their first attacking effort. Yeah, and I will say, looking back to their matchup against uh, against the Chiefs today, which, you know, same map, Chalet, they only got the two attacking rounds, three on defense. And I know they went one better here against G2, but the attack is kind of what thwarted them in that particular match as G2 are going to win this seventh round, make it 4-3. Just waiting for Fishlike and even Doki saying, come on, hurry up. Don't have all day. In the end, he does make the track forward. Doki says, thank you, and we can move on into the next round. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Good sportsmanship. But, yeah, I mean, that, that, that ar that's a round right there where you can obviously find the credit for G2 in, trying, in being able to stop that very fast-paced attack from Scars, but, uh, like, what, what are Scars trying to do there? Try and catch them off guard, but with no info, so like you don't even really know yourself. Like, yeah, it was a weird. It's a, uh, that's a throw away round, which is very really surprising considering you're 4 2 up. Coming into the second half, you've got everything to lose if you just do something like that. So just don't do that. Just play normal, see, drone, get info. If, if they're playing default defense, that's fine. Maybe you can find a pick, get pressure down below. And they just kind of send it. And they just, yeah, my problem. I mean, looking at this composition, I wouldn't be shocked if they were to go for something aggressive and direct again you have the tools to go for it with the blitz to send it in and then the belt of util to follow from the yin capital it wouldn't shock me i mean the, the thing that is making me question that though is the inclusion of nomad so there is a world in which they go for that thing, but is nomad just there as almost like a backup plan if, if it all goes wrong and then you try and have to play pick up the pieces later on they're not just going to go for like a big window vault in and try and send the blitz to a fast off, are they? Uh, I don't think so. I hope not. Did he just frag his teammate's drone? He did just take out his teammate's drone. It's been a long day. I, ha I have to ask that question. No, know? no. <laughs> Valid. There is no mozzie on the board, so it most definitely was friendly fire. <laughs> The no I mean, to be fair, like library with the air jabs makes sense. Try and clear this position out. Try and deny that light. But well, this is signaling to me again. Rex it's it's going to be direct. It's going to be a re direct double. What is got? This is very split and deep. Big window vault. The blitz towards the bar stop position. He has a little bit of a trip and a fall, but the adrenal surge did get him back up temporarily. Fish like in towards default at the half wall. Stands up. Wants to take the fight, and lawyer out will happily engage. Nina elsewhere does find a kill on to Alamount. A scrappy, scrappy round in the eight. Three versus three. This is, though, where Scars can look to slow things down. The kit's already in a decent spot. Over towards the half wall position in default. So you don't have to necessarily worry that much about the kit. It's in a good spot. You have to continue to play this quite normally. You do also have to then know, okay, G2 are going to play kit. They're going to play very deep sight. They're not going to be roaming all that much now. And that's going to make it very difficult in terms of these next engagements because, like, you're not going to get a free pick. You need to play together. Two on the exterior while well, we're just slowly, slowly pushing piano. I, it's not going to work. Push together, guys. What is solid beepers? And he finds the goal to Plaz. 
Surely he can't be allowed to get any more from here. Bar and bar stock. Of course, Laurie playing still very much this default defensive position and has to with where the kit is. Doki can't really move all that much now either. And suddenly Scar's back in a decent position. They have no utility though, the attack. So I think this backstall position, especially with Nitro and Pocket, is so favorable for G2. Yes, a two versus three, but a tough attacking round to convert. You, but you know exactly where he is, oh. and we're sure he will find the two kills necessary. Wow. Okay. And they do make it work. They made that look a lot easier than I was <laughs> anticipating, I'm not going to lie. With no util to cross for the half wall plant, they had to try and frag out, and they were able to achieve that. So Scars go 5-3 up. Questions asked of G2, and they will try and find those answers internally with a tactical timeout to wonder where it's all going wrong. They are staring down the barrel of an 0-2 start here for phase two. And it's a long, long journey back. Where's this come from? When does the APAC curse kick in? At what, uh, at what point do the Scars start losing? Oh, it's usually about right now. <laughs> about right now is when that APAC curse Well, especially off the back in. of it, especially off the back of the tuck timeout, I think G2 can recompose. It has yeah. been pretty scrappy from them though the last few rounds. They're not playing like a, a phase three team, which is where I predicted them to end up. I mean, just the fact that like we're sure he's able to push through piano. You've got a beeper there as well, it gives away his position, and he still wins that fight at the Mez. Yeah, I mean, it was a sharp shot. I mean, it's a good shot, and it's not, like, totally impossible for him to, to win that, but... It just felt like, for me, in that 3v3, with where the kit was, and as you said, the lack of utility... It felt like... G2 should have won that round. It felt like they did the hard work yep. in dealing with the Blitz and yep. getting the Diffuser on the ground, and then they weren't rewarded. Credit to Scars. They're playing very well in the parts of these rounds that they need to. They certainly have been showing up. They're, they're, they've still done some very scars, questionable things, <laughs> as we expect from all of our APAC teams, but they're playing well in these kind of more clutch situations and the, the end of rounds where the game is still there to be won. They're just closing it better than G2 at the moment. 5-3 up, one round away from match point. And seemingly with all the momentum now coming out of the tactical timeout for G2, what is their response to the situation they find themselves in? Kitchen and dining. They will extend up above. And double shield for the attack. We have the Blitz and Fuse shield. So Scars are going to throw them a bit of a challenge here. But Scars are either going to win this round comprehensively or they're going to lose it and look silly. Probably. I feel like it's like th th there's not much in between when it comes to, to scars. Of course, the Montang was banned out. Tayu is the, the Montang player and plays it far more than the Blitz. It looks like they're prepping for a, another set play. We saw it work to an extent in the previous round in getting a bit of map control and pressure on site. But they did drop that diffuser last time around and then had to wrangle back for the round win. So we'll see how they approach it here for round number nine. Looks like the setup has been compromised maybe a little bit by G2. So far for today's action to kickstart phase two, there's only been one win for APAC. That was Chiefs over Scars, guys. So a bit of APAC on APAC crime anyway. And Scars make it two for APAC. And for them... 1-1. One, one. Two rounds away. 90 seconds left in this one. And considering the lineup that they've brought for this round, their pacing hasn't necessarily matched it. Slow push over towards top library is Fishlike on the fuse. Tayo, Tayo on the blitz. When do they get involved? As Rack will find the opening kill. One spotted in towards bathroom for Tayo. I think he does know there's one in on the piano side. Fish like to confirm that though as he comes around this left side and indeed will find this kill through Rexon and that's a nice melee as well. Wow. Fish like they have absolutely dominated G2's defense at the top. The double shields have worked out beautifully and suddenly for Loira who's been honestly really good for G2. 12 and 5 and has been by far and away their best player now with it all to do. In a one versus three where you, you've got to try and take out two shield players. This, for all intents and purposes, should be done. And it is. Scars go up 6-3. They have three match points against G2.
<laughs> okay, that's that is some W shit talk from Scars. I I really Did hope you that came hear through. What I just heard. I really hope that came I through. I hope that came through. <laughs> oh my goodness. Scars are six Fire three up. up. They have three match points, and G2 are now looking to head to the lowest point of phase two that you can go. Round three, low, zero, two, best of three tomorrow. If they cannot bring this back, they are in serious, serious trouble. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. How do you get yourself out of this position, guys? Because you're in a position now where you've already taken your tactical timeout. That's dumb. You've spoken. You've lost that then very next round. All, all of the momentum with Scars. And G2 look shell shocked to say the least. Scars again continuing to show pretty good versatility here in the second half. They drop both shields heading into round number 10, and instead leaning a little bit more heavily into the utility. We have the Roteros combined with potential clearance uh, of the Zofia as well. You even have the breaching charges if needed from the Ash as well. And into this setup of the Castle Barricades, these army Kiba barriers as well, that could prove to be quite an effective tool in countering that. some info over towards Mares to help facilitate a library entry. Not particularly successful for Scars. Don't forget as well, the one round that G2 have found in this half was the throwaway, throwaway rush round from, from Scars to begin. So, I think when Scars actually play this more calculated, slow play style, it does benefit them. For G2, it's like, okay, how can we now look to disrupt this? Opening kill after opening kill has gone the way for Scars. So G2 you need to find a way to get more involved in the earlier portion of this round. Doki top library stairs. Push not necessarily coming from there. It's this exterior on the balcony outside of bathroom and, and piano. Well, we're seeing a lot of the aggression here from Scars. A lot of these Rotaros continue to just ring out around the map. No more though remaining for Nina. They're done. 90 seconds left in this one. Oh, good yellow ping. Can they play off it to find yet another opening kill? Doki in a very dangerous position. A position that is known to Scars. But they're starting to take a little too long for my liking. Yeah, G2 are holding some really powerful crossfires that are proving quite difficult to break. And they've been stalled out here a little bit. It doesn't necessarily feel like they're setting up for a play. They also have been stalled out. Yeah, it feels like G2 have controlled a good portion of the map here and denying a lot of these positions, power positions that Scars want. Opening kill did go to G2, but quick trade from Fish like Blaz having an absolute shocker. They know that Doki's over towards top library stairs, but his position was just a slight more touch to the right. Doki finds two in a power position. Uno to get the final one of the round. And finally some cheer for G2. And they subvert one of those match points. It's now 6-4. Yeah, they did a much better job there, G2, in preventing that kind of wind-up attack playstyle that we saw from Scars in the last few rounds. Um, where previously it was everyone setting up in a really good set play position with a definitive plan and a good read as to what the defense was doing. That time around, it definitely had a different tone to it where it wasn't a wind-up. It was more of a stall out facilitated by the fact that G2 played a little bit more aggressive in some power positions off-site and just made, I think, Scars question their push there. And yeah, it worked out really, really well. The question will be though, can they maintain that and build upon that for a couple more rounds to push an OT? I know we sound a little bit doomsday when we kind of mention that 8 pack curse, but it would be very on brand if somehow... Some, okay. Shush. You know what I'm... Shush. Okay. Yeah. I give you permission to bring that up <laughs> if it goes to OT, but until okay. then, you must... Two more rounds. You're, you're wishing it into existence. I'm not wishing it at all. Speaking it into existence. So two more opportunities for Scars to find arguably the biggest upset of the tournament so far. G2, though, at least a very decent response in terms of the way they played that round. They looked far more coordinated in the power positions that they wanted to hold. 
No one threw their life away, which I feel like that's something G2 have actually been doing quite a lot of in this game. Well, they're bringing a pretty hard counter comp this time around. The Warden and the Frost in play to counter any potential shield play. But Scars themselves pivot in response. We're not going to see any shields in play. Good zone utility with the Capital available alongside Grim, mm. And you can throw the line in there as some crowd control as well. Castle counter on the Flores. So in terms of the attacker repick, I think Scars have made quite a good read here. This is where it can start to feel really difficult with your Scars. There's one thing to be the underdog, and it's one thing to get some really good rounds, to get that momentum going. But you've got to now find the ability to close out. You've got to be a winner. Good information on to Doki's position on the mezzanine. On that Warden, if you can deal with him, that's certainly going to be one of the big win cons for Scars then moving forward. Playing that mirror position, but also playing that Warden. You can sense that for Doki, he's very much playing in a position that if he can do well, that could very much set G2 up for the round win. Adrenal Surge activated and Doki feels like the pressure's just mounting too much on his location. Like this from Toyo though, and he will catch the head of Doki. So no more Warden. Advantage for Scars. Four versus three. But no more Finca. No more Adrenal Surges. That was the one and only one you're going to get now with a minute 20 remaining. Only one canister remaining for the Kwan Hive launcher of Taiyu. But you still got all those bolts available for Washoi. You got so many flashes from Fish Like. In terms of utility, they're in a great position still for the late round if you're Scars. There's one in Mud, by the way, which is Uno. Holding very aggressively close on that window. Then Barstock for Loira, Fireplay Stairs for Blaz. So for G2, not really playing for trade positions now. Like, it's it's basically like, guys, win your ones, and we might win the round. If, we, if you lose your ones, we're done. Red pink information on Loira inside of Barstock. Blaz, big kill. One, he's one. Three versus three. Tyo makes entry in towards top library and suddenly time starting to to dwindle away that was the final drone that we saw previously being used there by scars didn't really find all too much so both teams at the moment tiptoeing around scars though with the advantage double stack towards library stairs blaz will fall full sight control for scars and down to uno in a one versus three and it's looking very likely that they are done scars will close it out upset of the tournament so far confirmed g2 are o2